Hello everyone and welcome to the Medavance webinar series hosted by Medavance Billing Service. Today's webinar is The Science, Revenue Connections, Assisting Clients and Increasing Reimbursements. We have a great presentation in store for you, but before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. Now we have taken a screenshot of the attendee interface, an example of that, so you should see something that looks like this on your own computer desktop in the upper right corner. You've joined this presentation using listening on your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, just select telephone and the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. Now we have put all lines on mute just to reduce the background noise. So if you have any concerns with audio or visual, please message me through the chat window located to the right of your screen. Now you will also have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. And you may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these questions and continue to address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. And you will also be receiving a link to review the recorded webinar in two to three days. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Steve Blum, Business Development Executive with My Brain Solutions, a division of Brain Resource, Inc. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. I'm happy to be presenting today on behalf of My Brain Solutions and in conjunction with Medavance Billing Solutions. Um, I would like to just start off by telling you a little bit about My Brain Solutions and our parent company. My Brain Solutions parent company is Brain Resource Inc. And we actually started over 32 years ago as a uh, research and development company, mostly to do with brain health. And we actually represent now the largest brain health database on the planet. And I say that just so that you know that the products that we have released, and certainly today's product is a, a shining example of that, our addiction treatment product, comes out of the results of all of these studies that we've done, and we've produced over 350 peer-reviewed white papers that have to do with brain health. And it's some of our big takeaways from that research that has developed our tools. We actually have four tools that we have developed. We chose to focus on some specific brain health disorders and have released these tools in about the last eight years or so to address them. Uh, we, we have a, an ADD, ADHD tool, a depression tool. Uh, we have a stress and anxiety self-regulation tool. And of course, the one that we're to speak about today, which is our addiction treatment tool. As you can see here, we do work with a lot of the Fortune 50 companies. Our stress and anxiety self-regulation tool is by far our most widely adopted. Uh, we have uh, quite a role of Fortune 50 and Fortune 500 companies that use that as part of their corporate wellness uh, program. And it has been very, very successful. In fact, successful enough where some insurance companies like Aetna have adopted our tools and made it a part of their corporate wellness program. So if you are a large company and you purchase corporate insurance through Aetna, you get our stress and anxiety self-regulation tools as a part of that insurance. But again, we're here to talk about our addiction treatment model today, and it is a three-level platform. And the first level of our platform is our assessment tool. So in this particular case, our assessment tool, by the way, is scientifically validated. It has appeared in over 200 peer-reviewed white paper studies on its own. So the information that this produces is all scientifically validated data. So where the assessment tool uh, comes into play for addiction treatment, this is something that's given to your incoming clients on or around the same time that you do your biopsychosocial. So after your clients have been in treatment for a couple of days, uh, you'll get them in front of a computer and they will take about a 30 to 40 minute online neuropsych assessment. Now this is not a test, it is an assessment and it's mostly made up of cognitive tasks, of actually of gains and exercises uh, meant to elicit certain responses in their uh, brain health and then we take that information and weigh it against a pool of their peers, and that pool being uh, made up of 
uh, people of the same or about uh, same uh, age, uh, gender, and level of education, and we give comparison scores based on that. So with our assessment tool, it's not like an IQ test. We're not looking for right or wrong answers. It's really just um, to elicit certain responses, and then we compare that to the norm. Now, where this information becomes very handy is you get the report back from their assessment in about three minutes. And we're looking at about 17 very, very specific areas of brain health. And again, we compare that to a pool of their peers and scale that out for you in these assessment results. Um, this is a very, very in-depth report, but I am going to show you what uh, basically uh, the, the biggest part of it looks like. Uh, this is an actual report here. Um, so we're not only looking at the cognitive area or the thinking area of your client's brain health when we give this assessment, but we're also looking at three other areas of brain health which are very important to the uh, substance abuse treatment model and their success in treatment, and that is we're looking at their emotional health, their feelings health, and their self-regulatory skills as well. And we're going to give you this report again in about three minutes. So when we go down and start to look at the results of the report, it's, it's ex again, extremely in-depth, but I'm going to kind of skip to the uh, meat and potatoes part here, kind of where the rubber meets the road. And this is the 17 specific capacities that we're assessing for them. So again, not just the thinking category, but emotion, feeling, and self-regulation as well. And it's based on a STEN scale, one being the lowest possible score, 10 being the highest. But anything that you see here in green is considered kind of an expected range for, again, the pool of their peers. But anything that appears in orange here is an area of concern for this client, and anything that appears in red is an area of great concern. So where this information becomes valuable, you've had this client for a couple of days now, and we know that you know if they come in with any kind of file at all, uh, that's kind of unusual. Usually what you're getting for your uh, basis of your original treatment planning is what you're getting from their biopsychosocial, which as we know is somewhat unreliable. And, and this is not just because uh, people coming into treatment are being even intentionally deceptive, although some may be. A, a lot of them are just really acting out still in a lot of behaviors that have kept them out there in that drug abuse world. Things like deflection and minimizing and things like that are still very, very prevalent in their behaviors. And, and the information that you get back in that biopsychosocial isn't entirely accurate in most cases. So what we're doing here is we're bypassing that and going right to brain health and we're able to point out not just areas of deficiencies and areas that need attention but also areas of strength. And again where this becomes very uh, valuable clinicians tell us is in this early stage treatment planning. So for example this client comes in and you can see that uh, flexibility is going to be an issue for this particular client. So they have a lot of black and white thinking. They're going to be difficult to uh, accept change and so forth. And you can also see that also in the red here, their stress and anxiety levels are off the charts. So we know that this client could have been sitting in the biopsychosocial and, and, and really minimized their, uh, their stress or their anxiety and said, hey, listen, you know, I'm just here because you know, I'm here for my mom, I, I, uh, you know, I just have a couple of beers with my buddies on the weekend, you know, it's gotten out of hand once or twice, but really I'm good. Well, by giving them this uh, neuropsych assessment, we actually see what's going on with them. And in this particular client, the stress and anxiety levels are off the charts. So, again, in this kind of early stage treatment planning, um, you might be sitting in a treatment planning meeting with the, with the clinical director and uh, he or she may say, you know, we brought in Joey the other day, he had his, uh, his uh, My Brain Solutions assessment, and there's a couple of uh, critical issues I think we should take into account for his treatment planning. One of those is this stress and anxiety level uh, being off the charts low. So uh, maybe they make the clinical decision to uh, perhaps not put Joey into your regular group format, large group format right away, and 
get him acclimated to the, the treatment environment by using some smaller group scenarios, some breakout groups, or working with him a little bit more individually until you get this stress and anxiety under control. So that's one way where we know that clinicians find this information very valuable. The other thing that we get, uh, you know, as far as feedback on why the assessment, the, this original assessment is so valuable, is that we're also setting baseline scores. In other words, this is where you're starting with this client. This is how they're coming in and presenting to you. So any data that we collect beyond this is going to be actual progress data. I'll show you what that looks like in a couple of minutes. So again, here's the, this is the, uh, the report. You don't have to wait for it. It's available in about three minutes. It downloads as a PDF and comes right to your email or to your clinician's email, whoever it is that you want to see that particular client's um, uh, outcomes. So again, we, we, the uh, assessment itself, much like our training, uh, I, I will say that you know, we are not clinicians. Uh, My Brain Solutions, we are brain health experts. So what we did was we consulted with uh, clinicians, in fact, 28 around the world, and discussed what applications would be good in order to assess certain brain health as it applies to addiction. So what we did was we took accepted therapies, uh, much like uh, all of our CBT games, for example, are built in the Dr. Aaron Beck model for cognitive behavioral therapy, what most clinicians would consider a standard or perhaps even the gold standard of care for early treatment. So we took those therapies, turned them into games and exercises, and that's how we're measuring their brain health in these very specific areas. Also keep in mind that our program runs as an ancillary tool to your existing program. We are not designed to replace any of your current therapy modules. We really run alongside your current therapies to actually boost brain health for your clients in support of the therapy that you're doing. So we give you a couple of other indicators. Uh, in the original assessment, this information isn't quite as important because this is kind of expected, but the indicators as you move forward with them in treatment may become uh, really valuable. So two of the things that we look look at and we know are, you know, obviously uh, very important in their in their treatment are the risks for dropout for program dropout. We know that AMA dropout is is an issue. Uh, there are studies out that clearly show that length of time in treatment uh, is very related to success. So we know that the longer that we can keep a client engaged in treatment, the better their chances are of staying clean and sober. Uh, and the other one is the indicators for relapse. So again, on an incoming client, you would, you would expect that they are at risk for both of those things. But again, we're setting baselines there. So that's the assessment. Again, a 30 to 40 minute online neuropsych assessment for which you get the results back immediately and then can treatment plan around as well as setting baseline scores to look at progress and improvement. The second step in our, in our program, the second platform is our training platform. So this is what is drawing from some of the big takeaways from our 32 years of research. One of, the, one of these big takeaways is, uh, it is a neuroscience phenomenon that has shown us um, that we can unplug and rewire the brain to think differently. It's called neuroplasticity. And basically what that says is, is that our brains work a lot by habit, by rote, by the things that we teach it to do. So we train our brains how we work, how we operate, and how we think. Here's a really simple example that most people can kind of relate to. So if, if you have been working at the same place for a year and five days a week, you get up and you drive to that office, uh, you're, and, and this morning you got up, for example, and let's say you had a dentist appointment. So you brushed your teeth extra good, you flossed, and you didn't have that cup of coffee because you knew you had a dentist appointment in the morning. 
But by the time you got to your car and got in it, turned, you know, plugged in your phone, turned on the radio and started driving, 10 minutes into your trip, you realize you're driving to the office. And that's, that's where our brains take over. And, and we, we, it'll, our brain will tell us to do what we've always done. So this is not only true with positive thinking, but it's also very true with negative thinking as well. So when we train our brains to act impulsively or to do certain things, we continue to want to work in, that, in those behaviors and those thought processes. So this is how it applies to recovery. In your therapies, you're teaching your clients that they need to think about things a different way, that they need to act a different way if they truly want to change. And you're working with them on this educational level. Well, what we're doing with our program is we're working with them on a physiological level. We're actually changing the way that their brains work. And again, this is using the science of neuroplasticity. And what neuroplasticity says is if you work on a certain brain health habit, you can actually close down one neuropathway and open up a new one. And quickly, I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. But all, again, all of our games and our exercises are built in very, very commonly used therapies and accepted therapies for our industry. And again, we're working with their brains on a physiological level to help them change while you're working with them educationally to help them change. So quickly, I'm just going to show you what the, the client side portal looks like. So once your clients have indeed taken their assessment, they will now have access to their training. So they have a HIPAA compliant login. We don't, we're not in the software business. This is on an online application that is on a secure server in Sydney, Australia. So they'll log in using their HIPAA compliant um, uh, data and they will have their training here. So a couple of things that you'll notice right away and that is that first of all it has their most recent assessment scores on there. They can take a look at their report. But we also have the training up here. Now right, right away you can see that there is some training that's highlighted for this particular account. And what that is is an algorithm that we've built into the system so that certain trainings are recommended based on the most recent assessment score and the continued training that this client has been doing. So it might not be the same training every day. Once a skill or a certain behavior begins to change and the scores go up, we can then this algorithm will point them to different uh, training that will help them in other areas as well. But all the games are always available to do training for the clients. And we have about 32 of these games and exercises available now. And we have them broken down into specific categories, resilience, stress reduction, positivity, and so forth. So real quick, I just want to show you an example of one of the games, and you can see how this works. So now your client's taken the assessment. One of the things they're going to work on is positivity, or one of the things that you're going to work, want to work on in your groups is positivity. So this is one of the games that you might have them playing, and this is called e Topia. So they will go in, click on this particular game, and it will always come up with, a, with a, an explanation of what the game is for. So this one's for tuning into positive feelings. And then they're also going to give them a brief tutorial of how the game works, especially if it's the first time they've played it, this might be important for them. So we give them a brief tutorial on how the game works. Now in this game, so then they'll hit start, and in this game what they want to do is identify the bubble with the one positive thought or, or word in it and click on it. So pretty simple game and yet as the game progresses it becomes a little bit more difficult. Uh, the words get a little bit more subtle. You have more choices obviously and they will continue to play. If they get one wrong it will go back so it will always work to the level that the, uh, that the client is, is able to work to. So this particular game lasts exactly one minute long um, and it's, it's pretty easy to see how this works with the science of neuroplasticity. Now we're, we're actually working on two levels here. First of all, we're training the brain to, uh, to recognize and accept the positive. So there's your positive 
uh, neuro pathway that we're building. But we're also, on the flip side of that, we're also training the brain to recognize and reject the negative at the same time. So you can see how we're helping the brain to physiologically change its focus, moving away from the negative and moving toward the positive. So for every game, it gives them a score and the levels that they've reached. We do this intentionally. Not only do the clients get to you know, be engaged by this and they want to beat their top score and all that, but it's feedback for them. This is a tangible way to see that their, that their treatment is working for them. Because when they're playing these games it's in, and these exercises, it's not just the therapy that we're doing, the digital therapeutics that we're exposing them to, but it's also the therapies that you're exposing them to during the day that's, that's helping them improve their brain health. So they can actually gauge their own improvement as well. And we really get, we get feedback from clinicians that this is really helping the clients become more engaged in their own treatment because they're actually able to see tangible results. So that's what the training looks like. So um, just going back to where we were, so it, we are an online application. So there's no software to purchase or anything like that. It's a HIPAA compliant login. And we are a mobile application as well. So kids can put this on their phone, they can have it on their tablets and so forth. And once they're enrolled, they keep that enrollment for whatever period you've enrolled them for. And they can continue to, they can take it home with them if they're only with you for a certain period of time and their account is still active and so forth. So it's a tool that they can take home with them. Now, what about results? So it, we're a research company, so this is kind of in our wheelhouse. So we, we did research on, on the effects of this. So a couple of things that we found. First of all, in only 20 gameplays, so in as little as the first 20 minutes of client engagement, do they actually start to see and feel results. Uh, we did a study, it's called our ABC study, on two of our early adopters of our program. They both had, have been involved with the My Brain Solutions for Addiction Treatment uh, program for about five years. And they've had thousands of clients go through their facility utilizing our tools. In both cases, it's an opt-in program for them because they're, they're an in-network uh, facility for, for one thing. But uh, in their particular case, what we, what we were able to do was set up a study where we took one group of clients, a couple hundred strong, and they were exposed to taking the assessment but not doing any of our digital therapeutics, our game training. And, and they were obviously, they had treatment at the facility. And then the second group, so that was our control group, and our second group, they took the assessment all, and did participate in the training, the game play, as well as their regular uh, treatment program. And we compared the results. And it was pretty amazing. It was about a 30% increase across the board in brain health for the uh, clients that participated in training versus the clients that didn't. And they had other positive benefits as well. They, be, they were able to manage stress more effectively. They were able to, they were more aware of their positive feelings, their focus and memory became better. But almost more importantly, they had this whole wellness attitude that developed for them. And in our follow-ups, we found that 85% of the clients that completed the program utilizing our tools as a part of it, 85% went on post-treatment to seek out other ways to improve their health. And that's an amazing number because when you think about it, here comes a client that is really on a path of self-destruction when they present to your facility. And not only were you able to stop that, but these clients have actually been turned around 180 degrees where now they're seeking out ways to improve their health and their life instead of doing destruction. So here's those comparative values for those clients that were involved in the program versus the ones that weren't. And what you may notice here is yes, all phases improve, thinking, feeling, emotion, and self-regulation. But the two greatest percentages of improvement happened in feeling and self-regulation. And again, just kind of as a layperson to uh, the, the clinical portion of this, what that says to me is you've taken a client and gotten them feeling much better about this new direction of their life, clean and sober, and with the self-regulation, you've given them the tools to stay there. 
So that, has, that speaks well of their potential for a longer term outcome. So as your clients progress through your program, at some point you go back and give them another assessment. Usually what we recommend is three to four weeks uh, in between assessments. And um, what that's going to do for you is give you scientifically validated progress data. Very critical here because this is something that insurance companies have been after, well, for 50 years, frankly, uh, but even more so lately. Uh, being able to actually show through a validated system progress data is extremely important with, frankly, a lot of your relationships, but certainly your insurance companies, but any of your referrers as well. So the clinical benefits of, of our assessment and therapeutics, we work on emotion, thinking, feeling, and self-regulation, not just the thinking part of the brain. Your assessment results for your incoming clients are available in just three minutes post-completion. So it's information that you can use right away in their treatment planning. Uh, it gives you in-depth insights into, their, uh, into your client's brain health to, again, aid in that treatment planning. Uh, we're clearing thinking, giving them more balanced emotions, decreasing stress and anxiety, and you're able to monitor your client's progress their brain health progress during treatment and post-treatment post with your custom clinical dashboard. So the, I showed you the portal for the clients to log in. As a provider, you're going to have your own dashboard that your clinicians have access to, where you can actually see all of your uh, uh, clients' activity. Uh, you can assign them very specific games to work on. This is where you'll You'll sign your clients up as well, um, and uh, this is this is what the actual clinical dashboard looks like. But this is a way for you to track uh, the progress of all of your clients. You can go back and review their most recent reports, and again, even if they have discharged from your facility, make participating in the My Brain Solutions program a part of their discharge planning. Because if they're enrolled for, say, three months and you're a 28-day program, they can take this with them wherever they go. If they continue on in another level of treatment, if they go back to New Jersey for you know, sober living, they can still, their account is still open and they should be participating in, their, in improving their brain health. And you can still monitor that from afar. We know that some clinics report back to us that this is an important part of their alumni program that they go back once a week and check on recently discharged clients and see if they're still engaged. And what we have heard, you know, from more than one client is that, you know, a sudden drop off in participation for them triggers a phone call to make sure that that client is okay. So, you know, that's just one more aspect of being able to, uh, to monitor your clients. You can actually do it from afar as well. So let's talk about the financials a little bit. That's the science behind it. Um, we do have a website. It's uh, www.brainnet.net. If you ever want to do any look at any of our research, uh, it's quite popular. Uh, in fact, uh, you, you, some of you may have heard of Lumosity. They happen to be two doors down from us in San Francisco, and they built their tools out of our research. Um, now, they're, they have kind of an everyman tool, again, mostly based in that cognitive area, but if you ever want to really look into the, uh, into the research that we've done, there's a lot of great videos and uh, other things on our website, on our www.mybrainsolutions.com website as well, and you can look at where our games were developed, the research behind it, and so forth. But let's talk about the financials, because we did, you know, a portion of this webinar is really about linking this, this scientific value and the treatment value along with the financial value. So there's a couple of things that we've been able to go back and look at with our existing clients. Again, we've had some that have, have had this um, uh, enacted now for over five years and have had thousands of clients go through. So one of the things that we were interested in looking at with them was AMA dropout. We wanted to see how many people were leaving treatment early before our tools were deployed and since. And what we found that was between 15 and 17%, they had a 15 to 17% percent 
increase in average length of stay. And the only thing that they can attribute that to is just fewer AMA dropouts because they, their average, uh, their treatment program didn't change. One of these programs is a 30-day, one is a 60-day. It ended up their average length of stay ended up being 44 days, which was a big increase between those two facilities of, again, between 15 and 17 percent. We asked clinicians why they thought that happened. And their feedback to us was because they had the information early on on what to focus on specifically with their clients, they were able to get them kind of settled down and focused on things to help them much earlier in the treatment process. And they really pointed to that specifically as to why their AMAs drop, uh, dropouts declined. Now the other thing is that the information, we also wanted to look at the financial standpoint of utilization review. We know that insurance company relationships are difficult at times and you know the difference between maintaining a client at the highest level of care and them stepping down to IOP or OP makes a tremendous financial difference for, uh, for your clinics. So one of the things we also wanted to look at was how this information was affecting UR efficacy. Because we know we're providing hard clinical data to now back up your clinician's observations and clinical notes. So let's take the case of the original assessment that we looked at. Joey came in, we found out his stress and anxiety levels were off the charts. So clinically, you guys determined that it might be best not to put Joey in your regular group format right away and to work with him a little bit more individually in some smaller breakout groups to get him acclimated to the treatment environment and, and, uh, and get that stress and anxiety level down. So now that your original CERT is over and you're calling in for utilization review and to get uh, your next certification for treatment, your clinical, uh, your UR specialist is probably asking for more days at the higher level of care. And in the clinical notes, it's going to say, Joey was so stressed and anxious when he got here, he's a week behind our regular treatment cycle because we had to address that first. Well, now by attaching the data that we're providing with our assessment tool, you have hard data, hard clinical data to accompany your observations. So we wanted to know if that was really helping. So we went back again to these same clinics and we looked at their, uh, their uh, financials per client. And all we did was average it out. The year prior to deploying our tools and the year since, and we, they saw between 12 and 15% increase in revenue, per client revenue for the same length of stay. So not insignificant, I mean just one day at a higher level of care per client, that's a $700 or so difference. So we know that, that, that that's been somewhat beneficial as well. Now of course with us there's no software to buy, there's no contract to sign, no long-term long obligation. We, we have the program available to you and you use it as you see fit. Nothing more than that. Uh, the cost per client is only $70. It includes unlimited assessments and three full months, 24-7 access to the digital therapeutics, the training tools. Now, for that $70, there is also, uh, there's coding available for reimbursement for the actual assessment interpretation. So client takes a, our assessment, the online uh, neuropsych assessment, the CPT code 96120 reimburses for a master's level clinician to look at that data and make clinical determinations from it. So much like we did with Joey, where we looked at, hey, he's stressed and anxious, here's the recommendation for how to deal with that, that goes in the clinical notes, makes you obviously very, uh, this code accessible to you. And that CPT code reimburses for an average of 65 to $90 depending on the insurance company. So that pays for your client right there. Now where the financials really started getting interesting for us is we started looking at um, what insurance companies wanted, what we were providing, and what coding would work with that. 
So fortunately, we've, we've been able to um, partner with, with Medavance to look at this information. And again, we're brain health experts, we're not clinicians, and we're certainly not billers either. So we know to go to the experts on these things. So we started looking at, and I met uh, with a couple of their UR specialists, and we looked at uh, what billing was available for this and what made sense. So about six months ago, we had a facility, an 84-bed facility, uh, deploy the, the CPT code 96116. The 96116 allows for $180 of ancillary billing that's outside the billing bundle billing uh, for ongoing assessment of improvement. And that CPT code is for a neurobehavioral status exam, clinical assessment of you know, reasoning, judgment, these things that you see here. Every one of our games, every one of our exercises, when your clients train, report back data on improvement in these areas. Makes it, abs because our games measure these, this progress, every time they do a segment, it's an absolutely acceptable application of this coding. So here's what we know. We know that these are the results we've gotten from deploying this billing. Uh, the accepted billing has been three times weekly for clinically supervised training. What I mean by that is it seems to be that the adoption of, of choice here, the actual deployment of our tools, has been to make it part of the clinical day. So for example, this particular facility has one of their uh, treatment rooms where they normally have groups, and they put a dozen small laptop uh, with Google Chromebooks in there. The clients come in, they rotate in as a group, they come in, they talk about what that group is going to be about that day. For example, it might be on positivity. Then they have all of their clients put on headphones, log into their specific um, portal from the site, and they do training on games based in positivity. Perhaps the clinician has even written those on the whiteboard for them. Hey, I want you to participate in these games. Half an hour later, everybody unplugs. The regular positivity uh, therapy module uh, goes on, and it kind of ties a ribbon on this. So the, the way that this has been very beneficial to the clients as well as the insurance companies are paying for it is that your training is now clinically supervised and it's focused. So they're looking at very specific um, behaviors or improvement areas. You're actually doing your regular therapy to back up what we're doing uh, physiologically with the brain training and with, with, so with your regular educational format. Um, we have had the, the average of the reimbursement across billed insurers is $150, which is about 80% of the billed amount. We have had zero denials on hundreds of billed events to date. Uh, we've had even very few actually resubmits that were requested. Um, you know, insurance companies won't let us behind the door and tell us what you know why they do why they do certain things. I think you know that's that's part of the uh, you know how they are. They operate in kind of secrecy, but we do know that you're providing information that they are after, and that is that truly scientifically validated progress data. So, looking at the the financials here, that that's an average increase if they're going in to do training. At our recommended dosage, which is three times a week, a half an hour per session, that's an average increase of about $2,000 per client per 30-day treatment cycle. So when you start to do the math, you look at that 84-bed facility that we're currently working with and have been now for a while, they're increasing their annual revenue for this year by about $2 million. And again, ancillary build outside the bundle. Um, very exciting because this is the latest you know, advancement. Neuroscience, you can see it coming up in a lot of different ways. Biosound, all, all kinds of different ways, mapping and so forth. So neuroscience is the latest advancement in treatment for addiction. We have a very, very focused program that works in conjunction with your current therapies. Um, it improves insights that lead to enhanced treatment planning, we have real-time client progress monitoring, 
improved efficacy and data tracking for your facility. Here's something I didn't bring up, and that is I showed you the progress data for the client when they took their second assessment. Imagine once you've had 100 clients go through your program and you have all this individual data on their improvements. Now you can take that data and, and uh, aggregate it and sift it and see how you're doing as a program and promote that. If you're helping improve clients' brain health by 30%, you should tell people about that. And it also gives you the chance to kind of look at how your program is doing overall, too. So you might notice that in three segments, maybe thinking, emotion, and feeling, you're improving clients at a, at a, at a great rate. But for some reason, your self-regulation for your clients isn't keeping up with those other three areas. You, you can make adjustments in your program to kind of balance that out a little bit. It shows you where, you, where you're doing really well, and in some cases, where you, where you could stand some improvement as a facility. Uh, we know that the client investment in the therapy improves the bond with clinicians. By being able to see real progress data for the clients, they not only feel like they're getting better, but they can see it, and that really helps them invest in their own treatment. Uh, we're extremely low cost. There's never any cost for training. We set up all of your clinical dashboards, your, your client portal, uh, there is no charge for any of that. It's strictly a, a charge per use, and that's $70 for a, a three-month enrollment for each of your clients. Uh, we do have longer-term uh, enrollments available, three months, six months. We have, we have one client who is a 28-day program, but they enroll their clients for a year because they're collecting the, the long, longer-term data, and they want to be able to track their clients. Um, and there's, frankly, outstanding financial returns. And those come through a decrease in AMA departures, improved utilization review data. Uh, we will co-brand with you and help you market your facility. You should promote that you're using the latest neuroscience in treatment. And, of course, with the CPT code billing. Um, I have sample assessment results. The ABC study that I referred to, those results are all available on request. Um, if you care to schedule a presentation appointment at your facility to learn more about your tools, uh, I'm happy to work with you. Uh, we will be at moments of change, and I would also like to just to take a moment to, um, to promote the event that we're having at Moments of Change Conference at, um, at the Breakers uh, coming up next week. Next Monday, in fact, in the evening, uh, co-sponsored by Medavance, we're having our first annual Brain Games Olympics, where uh, people can come in, sign up, and play a series of our games, and uh, we're going to announce winners based on aggregated scores. So we hope if you're coming to Moments of Change that you will also come to that event. So uh, thanks very much for your time and attention, and uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Lakeisha, so if there are any questions, um, I'm happy to, to answer them. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. So um, it looks like we don't have any um, questions right now, but um, when we do have our replay, if someone watches this back, is there a contact, is there a contact information that they can get from you, Steve, if they have any more information about My Brain Solutions or what you guys do? Yes, absolutely. So a couple of different ways that you can reach me personally. Now, I'm, I'm here in Florida, but I'm happy to help anyone or point you to the right person in your area. Uh, but I can be reached via email at steve.blum, B-L-U-M, at mybrainsolutions.com. Uh, my telephone number is 954-993-1558. Again, we hope that if you're at Moments of Change, you'll stop by our booth, number 111, and come to our event on Monday night. But, and, uh, you know, certainly we'll have anybody at the booth that could answer any questions that you have. And, and if you want to set up a presentation for your particular facility, I'm happy to. Uh... Awesome. Well, we want to thank you so much, Steve. And we want to thank everyone else for attending this MetaVance webinar series hosted by MetaVance Billing Service. So once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation, and we would appreciate it if you would complete the survey and provide us your feedback.
You'll also receive a follow-up email within 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar, The Science Revenue Connection, Assisting Clients and Increasing Reimbursements. On behalf of My Brain Solutions, Medavance Billing Service, and our presenter, we want to thank you so much for joining us, and we want you to have a great rest of your day.